Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're going to carry on looking at the Adobe Media Encoder as a way of exporting our products, our compositions from After Effects for the final use or for use if we like in another project using something like an image sequence. Now in the last tutorial I showed you how to drag and drop presets from over here onto your settings and change them. I'm just going to control Z to undo that. I've re-brought in expression example and you'll see that it's come in under its original settings. So originally its composition settings were as HD 1080i 25 and actually it was HDV. That's why we've got this pixel aspect ratio of 1.33. So that's the original composition settings. Now if we want to add additional settings or just change those we can drag and drop on top of them. So if I want to output my YouTube I can drag and drop on top of there. Simply do it and add a list and add other things as I showed last time by dragging and dropping them underneath. But it's a bit of a pain to have to continue to do the same thing over and over again every time you bring in a new composition into Media Encoder. And that's where this little option up here which is called User, Presets and Groups comes in. If you know that you always need to export to specific formats again and again and again, it's better to create a user preset group. So I'm going to click on user preset group and I'm going to click this little icon up here which says create new preset group. Click on that and a group is here and I can name it so let's call it Andrew's Faves for favorites. And what I can do is take the presets down here and put them inside this folder. So if I go down to my YouTube one which I use, it's the 1080p 25, click and drag, take it to the top and it'll scroll up and when it gets there I can drop it into Andrew's faves and then I can go down to Vimeo and say take that 72025 and drag and drop it in and I might then say well you know what I need um, a device I've got to show this on an Android tablet so let's go for a 960 by 54025 so take one of those and drop it into Andrew's faves and then perhaps I want to export it to an iPad as well so I can go an iPad 2 say 1080 and 25 again so I can take that up and possibly one more let's say I want to export it to an image sequence so I can go to my image sequence and I can go to say a ping sequence and take out an HD 25 ping sequence and drag that take it up to the top it'll scroll up drop it into Andrew's faves now say they're the ones that I want to use those are the ones that I mainly want to use and I turn around and say do you know what I really don't need to export the Vimeo one so I can click on Vimeo and click the little negative delete preset and it's gone and I've now got four presets inside the preset folder and I can minimize the preset folder and next time I bring in a composition so expression sampler I can drag the preset folder across and drop it on it so like this take it drag it drop and let go and it adds them below the original one now if you remember originally this was the actual size of the existing composition I've dragged something else on top of it if I don't want that one anymore I can just select it and hit the negative button and it's gone. It says are you sure? Yep, and there you are, it's gone. And those are now all ready to export in exactly the same way we did last time. So by setting up your favorite folders or a user preset group you can actually save yourself a lot of time by just moving them all into one folder and then dragging and dropping the folder onto the appropriate composition and then you can export them as you want to. One other thing to show you, in the last one I showed you that you could go into the settings of a particular preset and double check it, we did that with the PNG sequence. But if I go to devices and let's open up say an Apple iPad, so here's an iPad 225, select it, right click on it, preset settings. Now say I happen to know what the new settings of a different iPad was going to be, the next iPad that came out, I could change its name up here and call it iPad, I'm going to call it iPad X and then I can change how it's shown so let's just say for arguments that the screen size had changed on this iPad X whatever it was and we're going to choose something that was much smaller well, I could go in there and I could choose it so say 1280 by 720 there we go and I was doing a smaller version and perhaps we're going to do a different frame rate so we could say 12 and a half so I could call it iPad X 720 12.5 very weird setting I know but there you go it said what it is I'm just showing you that you can change these things then click save a copy 
and you'll see, I'm now going to click cancel, that a copy with that name has been created in the user preset and groups and there it is up here. I have not changed or modified in any way the original one. It's not been changed, it stayed exactly the same. So that when you make a change like this, you can't ruin the original system presets. You will just create a new preset in your preset group that you can then drag and drop across and add to whatever list you want to and export it from there. I'm not actually going to use that one. In fact, I've discovered that, you know what, that's a useless preset. So I can just select it and I can just hit the negative button and it's gone. So that's how you can create user preset groups and that's how you can modify a preset when say the next app iPad update comes along and you want to change the settings to reflect how powerful it's become. I hope you found this tutorial useful. In the next tutorial we'll have a very brief look at watch folders. My name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching.